everyone. M my name is John Yaswinski, and I'm the CEO and president of Father Bills in Mainspring. And I'd like to welcome everyone today to the, when the Roadway Hotel starts to convert to the Roadway Apartments, permanent housing for 69 units for chronically homeless individuals. We'd like to especially welcome our funders and partners, especially Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, Undersecretary Maddox. <laughs> Secretary Keneally and Mayor Sullivan are also here today. I'd like to recognize also our State Senator Mike Brady and State Rep Michelle Dubois, who's also in attendance today. <laughs> this housing project was always about saving lives. During the pandemic, we moved here in order to socially distance our shelter guests. We saw our COVID infection rate drop from 20% to less than 1% when we socially distanced from Mainspring Shelter to the roadway. Together, together we are taking a depopulation site, a temporary shelter, and not leaving it, not closing it, but we are converting it to housing for our most vulnerable neighbors in record time. All of us here, the funders, the partners, with laser focus, created housing in one year. Siting, local approvals, support, funding, lending, all lined up because we were all on the line to get something done because of this pandemic. Usually a complicated affordable housing project like this one takes three to four years in our world. This administration, thank you to Governor Baker, the Lieutenant Governor and Secretary Keneally last year, made funding available to convert underutilized properties and hotels during the pandemic to housing for people experiencing homelessness. With the support of the mayor and ward councilor Aniri, we knew we had the political will to do this right here in Brockton at this location. From there, you make two calls. You call Kate Racer from DHCD about potential funding, and you call Roger Herzog from CDAC for a really large loan. <laughs> Thank you, Kate and Undersecretary Maddox, because I know I bothered Kate a lot over the last year on this project, but I think I only bothered Jennifer once for a few vouchers, maybe? <laughs> From that support we had, the ball then started to roll down the hill. And even when we faced major hurdles and speed bumps and hiccups, we together, all of us, but all 28 plus people on state closing calls every week for six months together, all of those people together knew what was at stake and we crushed the speed bumps. The roadway apartment project shows that when we have the political will and the dedicated funding, we can end homelessness very quickly. 69 units of housing, if we look at the point of time of homelessness today for individuals in the city of Brockton, we just reduced it by 50%. Of course, for every five people we move out, six people are in need of prevention services, diversion services, and not just shelter, but they come to our door. So we are continuing to look at 
other interventions and other support that we need. But this project is a great model to show how we need to continue to be committed to permanent supportive housing. Another shout out to MHIC and Mass Development for believing in this project and believing in us. Thank you. The mayor of Brockton has been a tremendous leader during this pandemic. His support to our safety net programs is second to none. As soon as the pandemic hit, he has had core leaders of healthcare and shelter organizations in this city on a call twice a week, dedicated every week, and he shows up every day. When I called him about the roadway, and said how it will save lives. He said, let's do it, John. Well, Mayor, we did it, and thank you for your help. So please join me in wel welcoming Mayor Robert Sullivan to say a few words. Well, first of all, I just want to say uh, for those that are visiting Brockton, welcome to the City of Champions. Welcome back, Lieutenant Governor Polito, Secretary Keneally, Under Secretary Maddox. Uh, these are true champions that always visit the City of Champions. They weren't born and raised here in Brockton, but they're Brocktonians. They get it. They understand. And as the Lieutenant Governor just said to me, uh, this is pioneering today, right? So I'm the son of a retired history teacher, right? So let me just tell you a little bit of first and pioneering in Brockton. First department store Santa Claus here in the city of Brockton. First catches mitt made here in Brockton. First electrified movie theater, uh, fire station, and street light here in Brockton. Today, we're going to add the roadway. First in the Commonwealth. So I was born and raised here in Brockton, right? I drove by this uh, going to Brockton High every day. This used to be the Carlton House. Uh, maybe I, uh, I drank here back in the day as well. They used to have a nice sports bar back there. I don't know, that's the circle of trust here. We'll keep that quiet. But I do want to say this. Uh, no one chooses to be homeless. Like, there's so many variables of why people are, are on the streets. Mental health, drugs, alcohol. Maybe they lost a house in a foreclosure epidemic. Right? We all grew up with the idea of a roof over our head. So today, this is really about collaboration. Working with Lieutenant Governor, working with Governor Baker, working with Secretary Keneally people that, that understand how compassionate we need to be. John Yazinski and his team, April, and everybody here, they do it every single day, right? Every single day, they're trying to make a difference in Brockton. So I'm just so proud to be here, not just as a mayor, but I'm proud to be here as a lifelong Brocktonian because Brockton's on the map, the trajectory is real, we're going up in the right, right direction. And this is phase one. Phase two is gonna be down the street on Manly Street where, where Father Bills is gonna be able to relocate campus setting, wraparound services, it's a win-win. And then downtown Brockton, the city of Brockton will reacquire Father Bill's Main Spring. So today I just applaud everybody for their work, for their dedication, for a common purpose and a shared vision. And right now it's really my honor to thank Lieutenant Polito, Lieutenant Governor Polito, thank Secretary Keneally. Let's keep working together to better Brockton. God bless each and every one of you. Well, Lieutenant Governor, uh, ever since you've been in office, we've been blessed to have you come into Brockton, you know, for uh, Jack's place, um, Patty's house. You met Patty Conway, one of the founders of Mainspring. You, um, you know, even when we faced community uh, resistance sometimes, you guys stuck with us. Uh, Montello, welcome home across the street. Um, in Quincy, the new housing resource center and, and housing just a few months ago with, with the secretary and the governor. You've been uh, out here for workforce investment to help the people that are struggling with homelessness get jobs. So uh, you and your administration, the governor and secretary uh, and everybody involved has been such a friend to people struggling with homelessness and to Father Bills in Mainspring. So with that, we thank you for the support and welcome you today. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Stay speeding by on our affordable housing tour. 
Uh, we have had a great morning just leaving Bridgewater to celebrate the conversion of a school into over 50 units of affordable, accessible housing. And here in Brockton, I'm so happy to be back here in person, the city of champions, the city of firsts. And to celebrate this first for our Commonwealth is truly, truly an exceptional and special moment for our administration, for this community, and for the bills in Main Spring. Uh, let me just start by saying thank you to the mayor. It's great to see you in person. Over the course of this past year, we've spent a lot of time by phone or by Zoom, and it allows me the opportunity in person to say thank you. Thank you and your council members, your leadership in this community for the hard work uh, that you put into keeping the people of this community safe and healthy. Uh, it was no easy task and the governor and our team would not have been able to accomplish what we were able to without partners like you. So thank you. Uh, Father Bills, this is amazing to have then taken this hotel, made this an isolation and recovery place to help people navigate through uh, COVID-19. Obviously it worked. Uh, you reduced transmission uh, to very low levels. Uh, you're also helping people uh, ob obtain the vaccine uh, to help them for the longer term uh, be healthy relative to COVID. But what happened during this process is you and others discovered an opportunity. And the opportunity was to take this structure and to build on your models relative to shelter. We were right to shelter state and think about how you could bring a permanent place of residency to these lives, right? Stable, safe, healthy, supportive, and then be able to help these individuals over the course of time, on their time, gain the support they need for wellness, support they need for skill building, support they need for confidence, and perhaps an ability to ramp off to another form of living arrangement within your community or not so far from here, and then to free up some of these places of housing for someone else to have that path forward. This is amazing. And it wouldn't be possible without you coming forward and saying we have an idea and, and an opportunity and your partnership with this community, a proven one. A level of trust obviously exists between Brockton and Father Bills and Main Spring to be able to launch something like this. I thank you because what you're doing here serves as a model for other communities that desire to provide a place of living, a more permanent place of living, that they just need to call you and call Roger and Kate, because <laughs> they always accept your call, and to make this happen in other places across our Commonwealth to help us solve and end homelessness, which has been a mission of yours for, from the beginning of your time. The other piece of this that I want to uh, acknowledge is, I mean, you in this community know this place, it's now a new thing. And to me, this is a neighborhood and it's a community. So if I'm one of these individuals who finds myself in one of these beautiful brand new places, I feel respected, I feel supportive, I feel loved. You have a kitchenette, new countertops, new bathroom, everything. But I also know that when I leave that space, I know my neighbor, I know the one across the hall because they're gonna be there tomorrow and probably the next week and the next week after that until they find something better and new for them in their future. That's beautiful as well. And if I'm one of these individuals and I'm having a really crappy, rotten day, I know there are people down the hall that I can talk to that will help me and support me so that I can have a better day tomorrow. This is, this is extraordinary. There's nothing easy about this. Uh, so thank you for stepping up and showing the way and doing it. 
Uh, we want to do more. You know, since we've been in office, we put $1.4 billion into producing and preserving uh, housing. We clearly need to do more. We're in a housing crisis here in the Commonwealth. We need more of everything. Housing for shelter, housing for this community, housing for workforce, housing for seniors to age in place. We need housing of every kind. But it all really starts with the community's vision. As a housing choice community, you've embraced it here in this community, understanding that housing is, is needed for you to continue to grow as a community. Housing's needed in your downtown so that your businesses have customers and people that they see day in and day out. And housing's important for that next generation of Brocktonians to continue to be able to call Brockton their home. So thank you so much for this community stepping forward and for showing the way to others. We're hoping that with the ARPA bill, uh, the funds from the federal government, the legislature is contemplating how to put those dollars to use. We hope that they'll adopt, at a minimum, the billion dollar plan that the governor uh, laid out, which includes about half a billion dollars for home ownership and half a billion dollars for more affordable housing. That's critical. We could use your advocacy and your support to seeing those dollars released soon so that we can share them with our partners and get more of this kind of housing and others built all across our Commonwealth. It's a great day here in Massachusetts. I want to thank you for allowing us this opportunity to support you. And with that, I'd now like to turn it over to Secretary Keneally. Well, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. It's great to be with you all here today. Um, John, always great to see you. Last time was in Quincy, right, to celebrate another chapter in your vital work, and, uh, and wonderful to see this project come to life. Mayor, always great to be back in Brockton. I thought John used a phrase that is really important when you think about housing development, which is political will. And having the political will at the local level to develop housing like this is, is essential. So big thanks out to the mayor for that. And our, our wonderful partners here, my partners in housing, where's Roger from CDAC, see Laura Kanda from Mass Development, M. Hick, and of course the, the fabulous team at DHCD, Undersecretary Maddox and Kate, who have just brought so many amazing projects to life over these last number of years. Um, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned, we are in this uh, affordable housing tour across the state. We're doing six days in 12 communities. We'll th see 36 different developments. And you know, the, they're, all, they're all different. They're all different shapes and sizes and serve different populations. And they're all in different phases of development where we're literally you know, breaking ground one day and cutting ribbons the next day and seeing projects that have been around for a while. Um, but they all start with a few, a few common elements. They start with a building or a site uh, and they start with someone's vision, someone's idea to bring that site to life and create housing uh, and in turn have a big impact on a community and a big impact on people. And they're all just inspiring projects to see the level of collaboration it takes to, to bring these projects to life. Uh, what was it, 28 calls over to 28 people weekly on calls? I mean, that, that's sort of, that's how this stuff happens. A lot of really smart, dedicated, creative, tenacious people that want these projects to happen. And we do that really, really well here in Massachusetts. And as the Lieutenant Governor said, we want to do more. We want to and need to do a lot more because we've been in a housing crisis for a long time. So all these projects are, are special. This project, I think, is somewhat uniquely special in a couple of respects. One is it, it's a first. And it's always fun to do something that's a first, right? We, we have so many proven programs and, and proven projects, but to have something that could be a new model is really, really exciting. You know, the governor has this great expression, do more of what works. And I think this one's gonna work, right? And so we should probably think about doing more of it, right? <laughs> but the second reason this one's a little bit different than maybe some others is we talk about how affordable housing can, can impact lives. This one's gonna save lives, right? And I thought what you set up top there, John, was really special. This is gonna save people's lives. And, and somewhere down here it says nobody should be homeless. Nobody should be homeless, right? Nobody. And what does it take to solve that? It takes that political will and it takes funding 
and it takes proven programs, and it takes wonderful people to make it happen. So we hope to do a lot more of this. We do need that ARPA proposal. You know, the billion dollars for housing would go a long way. Um, look forward to working with the legislature to get that one done. But this is a great day to celebrate. It's a great model. It's a great example of collaboration, and hopefully a lot more to come. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. And we'll definitely already started advocating for the ARPA funds, and we definitely have some ideas for that money right over at Manly Street here. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I made a you know a joke, but not a joke about calling Roger uh, when, when when this idea came. But um, you know, probably about seven or eight years ago, I was at CDAC. Um, and uh, we're talking about a bunch of projects, and I brought up the Quincy Project to CDAC. And that project, of course, has been in our universe for over 10 years, right? It took a long time to get there for Quincy's housing resource project with supportive housing. But this one, because of the pandemic, when I called Roger, uh, it was an immediate, like, let's figure this out, John, and CDAC will be there with you all the way. And knowing how quickly we wanted to purchase this property, can you imagine calling a quasi-public private agency, a, a lender, and saying, hey, can you help us tie this up and then close on this without any permanent funding guaranteed yet? <laughs> and you know what Roger did in CDAC with Will? They helped us do all of that. So with that, thank you, Roger, for your advocacy and your support. Thank you very much, John. That is very kind. Congratulations to Father Bills and Mainstream, the board, the staff, your development team, who have been so diligent in working to bring this new model of permanent supportive housing to Massachusetts. As you said, CDAC committed acquisition fund financing in January 2021, and in very quick fashion, we closed on that loan in March, which allowed Father Bills to take title to this property and package the multiple sources and types of resources that it takes to own and operate supportive housing. We worked very closely with our partners at DHCD to underwrite the project and award the first funds under this new rolling NOFA for single room occupancy housing. And these are funds that come from the housing bond bills, so legislators take note. They're being deployed here in Brockton. And I really have to just echo what we've heard. This administration has fully embraced what supportive housing can do for the individuals who have been unfortunate and have experienced homelessness. It makes complete economic sense that we would rather spend our public dollars helping people get into permanent homes rather than dealing with emergencies on an ongoing basis. John, it takes special efforts to be the first to undertake a new type of project. So thanks to you and your team for being the guinea pig and working collaboratively to demonstrate that this model can work. CDAC is ready to work with others around the state to achieve this excellent outcome. I want to give a shout out to my partner at CDAC who did a lot of great and very fast work on this, Will Morgan. Um, so thank you again, John. We can't wait to see the finished product and to move on to the next one. Thank you. To do projects like this, you need public and private support, and you need operating support that comes along with this. And again, this was one of those projects where it was not necessarily in the blueprint, the long-term plan at Father Bills in Mainspring to have things lined up for years to know that you're gonna have the acquisition funding and the operating funding. 
But the Massachusetts Housing and Shelter Alliance stepped up also and said, we want to be in this to help out with some of the pre-development costs, but also to be there for the operating side. Just want to recognize Joe Finn, who's not here today, but Joyce Tavon from Ahasa for all of their support for this project. Well, it takes private support, as I said, and, and we at Father Bills in Mainspring revert, re revert to looking at our private partners, and we call them our angels. And well, the Arbella uh, Foundation and the Arbella Company has been with us since the beginning days of our mission, and they have continued to partner with us. Just in the city of Brockton, Arbella supported Jeff's Place, 32 units, specifically for veterans, back in 2010. Jeff's Place and Patty's House, Montello too. They've helped create over 100 units of housing with their foundation support. They then stepped up for this project and committed three years of funding to help us with the operational support. And John Donahue, the CEO and president, is so into this model, he's saying, let's do a white paper on this, John. Let's study it, and let's help if our Bella Insurance Foundation can help tell the story. Bev, you've been a great friend through the years, a great supporter. We thank you. At this point, I'd like to introduce Beverly Tangvik, the president of our Bella Insurance Foundation. Well, thank you, John, and thank you, everyone, for being here and inviting me to, to say a few words. I have to say at Arbella, um, we started our charitable foundation in 2005, and we've supported Father Bill's and Mainspring um, right from the get-go. And I have to um, acknowledge Liz Kim, who's on the board of Father Bill's and Mainspring, who was an assistant vice president at Arbella and um, very sheepishly asked us for a $1,000 donation way back in the day for a fundraiser. And over the years, um, our support has definitely grown. And it's grown because we believe in Father Bills in Mainspring. They've earned, they have a proven track record. They have a reputation as a national and regional um, leader in the fight to end homelessness. You know, as a funder, we look to um, grow partnerships and getting to know John and Katie and the staff um, at Father Bill's, it was just a very simple, you know, the creative solutions they um, form and the courage to move forward. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to move forward with these projects, but there's no stopping them. And we've just always been so impressed. Our employees regularly um, bring and serve meals at the Quincy shelter in particular. You know, we hope to get back to that now that hopefully COVID is getting beyond us. But, um, you know, housing insecurity is an urgent crisis and Father Bill's Mainspring is confronting this crisis with this bold, innovative plan. And um, we're just so pleased to be able to support it. We truly believe in you and um, we really feel honored to be able to get to know you and work with you over these years. And I think, um, actually John Don, who mentioned, I think Liz had told us about this roadway, and I think we came and said, we're giving you money before you even asked. So, <laughs> so that's how our relationship is. So um, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Bev. You know, a few years ago, we said that um, hospitals will start helping us develop housing because our chronically homeless people go in and out of our emergency rooms and they don't need to be there if they have a home. They're very expensive to Medicaid. They go in and out of emergency rooms, psych hospitals, behavioral health detoxes, police cars and jails. And so it's cost effective and we've seen that for hospitals, the costs will go down many a times when we house people because they're not using those expensive services. Well, the Beth Israel Leahy Health Hospital uh, recently came to the city of Brockton and wanted to make an investment and said, what are your community needs? And they worked closely with the mayor and to many of us here in the community and did a kind of a survey and said, what are your community needs and housing 
and food insecurity came up as the bigger concerns over the last couple of years. And so with that, we, we promoted and presented to Beth Israel the Roadway Project, and they committed resources to help us with the acquisition to buy this place, which is just tremendous support. Thank you to the mayor for the leadership and the connection of that. Um, and thank you um, to Melissa Schuyler, who's here from Beth Israel, to say a few words. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Beth Israel Leahy Health and Dr. Kevin Tabb. As healthcare providers, we're acutely aware of the impact that stable housing and good quality housing has on someone's health, on their ability to manage a chronic disease, on their ability to get the best benefit from an acute medical treatment. And we have been so thankful to the constant messaging and to the constant support from Governor Baker, from Lieutenant Governor Polito, from the legislature, from leaders like Mayor Sullivan, to say you've got to address this housing crisis. And throughout the pandemic, at Beth Israel Leahy Health, what we've seen is we really needed to take a minute to pause and celebrate and recognize the silver linings from the crisis. It's what's keeping us going through this continued pandemic. And so we've taken a moment here and there to say, did we do something innovative? Can we continue to scale this? Will this benefit us as a system outside of a crisis? Whether it was bringing a clinician's visit to someone's phone or having someone create a pop-up ICU space at a hospital, transferring supplies in an innovative way, or bringing a vaccine to millions of people in a matter of weeks. We really needed to say, can we keep a hold of this innovative spirit? Can we do this? This project is such a great example of how we need to keep it moving, how we can find the silver lining in crisis. And I have to tell you that at Beth Israel Leahy Health, we love partnering with Father Bills in Mainspring. It's your work and your proven leadership that brings us to the table to, to be able to build on the impact that you have. We are so grateful for that. And we believe that it's really important for us to be a part of those upstream solutions to the crises, to the things that impact our community's well being, the health of our patients. But I just want to say it's really great to be here today to celebrate, to recognize the unrelenting work that you and your team do every day to bring shelter to people, to bring them care, and to think about how a project like this will do that, will make such a world of difference in so many people's lives. We are grateful to be a part of that and we thank you. Well, in closing, you know, I want to really thank our development team that put this together, Peregrine Urban Initiative, um, Elton Hampton, Bruce Hampton is here, uh, Curtis Construction, John Curtis is here, led us on a great tour, NeighborWorks of Housing Solutions, uh, Maloney Properties, and Hackett and Feinberg, um, the attorneys that helped us with the deal. Um, you know, on that call, as I said, the 28 people, after they, we finished the call and the closing happened just a few weeks ago, it was amazing to see affordable housing attorneys and staff from all of these places. Just, I saw these emails coming back and forth, and it was like I've never seen before of how proud they were to be a part of this project. I heard the words historic, bold, greatest project I've ever been in in affordable housing. You know, Eastern Bank stepping up at the last minute and saying, be a vendor, be a partner with us. Thank you, Eastern Bank. You know, I want to also say, you know, as many of the speakers have said today, our staff has been absolutely tremendous through this pandemic. We never paused. We always came to work. We always were helping people every day. You know, the frontline staff that always came every day, Father Bill's in Mainspring was renting hotel rooms, paying people, you know, to, I mean, we were begging people to come to work 
paying them more than we can afford at the time. FEMA steps up and helps us. We rented hotel rooms so the staff wouldn't go home to their family members so they would show up to work. We really need to look at the investment of our frontline workers and supporting them to continue to be able to live in our community. Thank you to all of our staff who are here today for all of your support through this pandemic. And I just want to also say with a special sh shout out to April Conley, our chief operating officer, who hasn't just had to lead Father Bill's in Main Springs operations through a pandemic, but has had to focus on a record setting project timeline with all of us, um, balancing me through this process. Um, so thank you, April, for all of your support on this project. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for coming. Secretary Keneally, Under Secretary, thank you, Mayor, all your all the funders. We really appreciate all the support. Have a great day. God bless.